feelings and logic yeah. both are needed speaking from the heart and speaking from mm -hmm. the head I think that really does say it all yeah. so why do we need to bother with a third filter well there are a lot of people that don't in fact they're perfectly happy if everybody feels good and you're doing a good product you go out about your business and then you slowly go out of business we're the best and then the company's gone uh, because the world changed technology changed you can sleep on it for a little bit with people and quality but if you don't innovate and you don't adapt you're not going to be here and so you've got to spend time in that third corner here of what's coming down the road what's over the horizon how are we experimenting how are we inventing what new ideas have we tried today because we're going to need those new ideas now what I've done for the uh, future filter is I have a picture of a butterfly butterfly is a good symbol of it uh, for several reasons one it starts as a caterpillar and one day it goes into a cocoon comes out as a butterfly well who would have guessed because we know because we know the pattern but mm -hmm. did the butterfly know no he just spun the cocoon and one day he came out as a butterfly mm -hmm. it's sort of unpredictable another thing about a butterfly is you don't put a leash around his neck and take it out for a walk like a dog you just let it fly and the innovation filter in an organization is letting go very very much letting go as the butterfly flies away the other reason I like the butterfly as a symbol for innovation is the whole idea of complexity science and chaos science started the day the butterfly effect was invented. Uh, about 1961, Edward Lorenz, who was a meteorologist, was running some computer programs on his digital computer in the early 60s, and he thought he could predict weather maybe 30, 60 a year out because we could do anything back in the 1960s. <laughs> and he reran some numbers and he got different results from the same thing and what he discovered is he had input numbers accurate to three decimal points the internal memory was six decimal points so you take temperature a difference of less than one one thousandth of a degree made a big difference in the long run and it just hit him said wow that means a butterfly flapping its wings in South America could affect the weather in North America and I have to factor that into my model I can't factor that in my model so therefore I will never be able to predict the weather more than a few days out that was about 50 years ago and he's been proven right you know we can see the weather in the next couple days but not 30 days out that's the butterfly effect you forgot to factor in the smallest little difference another interesting thing out of complexity theory is what's known as co collective intelligence see I got a picture of some bees building a hive bees aren't real smart they don't have a blueprint for building a hive they have no instructions on where to locate the hive and they just buzz around and, and all of a sudden the hive comes out and I like to look at that at work I, I have uh, I'm in a technology position and a number of uh, technologists report to me and the best thing I can do with these smart people often is leave them alone and see what good things happen if I try to tell them what to do and how to do it and plan it for them I will never get the innovation that I would get if I say I kind of sort of want this let me know when you got something that might look good now that's bad management according to the blue filter right mm -hmm. but it's good management to the green filter and collective intelligence is letting people go and I heard that 3M used to uh, say 15 percent of your time at work should be spent on something other than work that's how we got mm -hmm. post-it notes some guy said what could I do with glue that's no good and he came up with glue that's no good, put it on the yellow stickies, invented a new industry because that's innovation. Where did it come from? Don't know. But you get a bunch of smart people, collective intelligence, you never know where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. Another thing that comes out of the whole complexity world is this idea of order and disorder. Uh, we, we like to think we can control nature, we can put out forest fires, but the more you learn about the forest is the fire is part of the forest. In fact, there's some trees that never germinate except after a fire. Same with the prairies in North America. There are some plants that don't grow except after a fire. So you have order, you have disorder. And nature is never in equilibrium. It's boom, bust, it's order, disorder. This picture of the uh, moose I shot in Yellowstone Park a few years ago, there were terrible fires in the late 1980s. Today there's water, there's new growth. It's part of nature. Even though we don't want the fire, it, it is very much a part of it and disorder is a part of this whole future filter and innovation and then you think about the herd whether it be be moose or elk or deer 
uh, or even rabbits, you got predators. And we know if you don't have predators, the herd gets too big, and then you've got to have hunters go kill them or something, or they starve. But unfortunately, we often think that nature puts them in balance. Don't we think there's equilibrium between predators and herd? Well, in reality, it's boom-bust. The herd gets bigger and smaller depending upon the climate and a lot of things. The predators get bigger and smaller depending upon the size of the herd, and it's never in balance. Never has been, never will be, and it's always boom-bust. You get too much herd, too many predators. Life is very much boom-bust, can't be controlled. So then you say, what do I do with that piece of information? Is it good that we can't predict, can't control? Well, no. But if I look at economics, and you know, in the 20th century, we had a major depression. We had booms. The 21st century, what have we had? Booms. We've had bust. Mm -hmm. You know what we're going to have in the future? We're going to have boom, and we're going to have bust. And I don't mm -hmm. care what the politicians want to do about it, because that's the rule of nature. That's the rule of complexity. That it, it gets out of hand, there's no equilibrium, and there's no control, and you never know what's around the corner. On the other hand, if you put on the blue filter, and you can control. That's why we have a Federal Reserve. That's why we elect politicians to do something about the problem. That's why we have bankers. So you can have equilibrium of supply and demand. And one isn't wrong, and the other right. They're both right, and they're completely different. They just happen to overlap. Now, be, that alone is interesting, but then how do people feel? You know, we do want socialism. When I get old, I, I kind of sort of want Social Security. I'm glad my parents mm -hmm. have it. And we do want health care, don't we? Mm -hmm. We just don't want to pay for it. That's the problem, <laughs> right? It's true, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want it, but we know we can't have it because our logic says it can't be done. We can't afford it. But our emotion says, but I want it. Well, mm -hmm. socialism is appealing, and it's right. We want to take care for each other. What I would say is there's a sweet spot where there's a little bit of chaos, mm -hmm. a little bit of control, and a lot of feeling. And if you get only one, you're looking only at the red, and you're not getting a good picture. So mm -hmm. pure communism takes you nowhere. But pure capitalism run away amok, and libertarianism also takes you nowhere. Uh, that's mm -hmm. that future filter, and, and pure control of traditional economics takes you nowhere. But together, we can have a powerful economy just by letting it all come together. Mm -hmm. Sort of fun to me when I see the possibilities. I instead of saying, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, <laughs> saying, well, I can do this and I can do that, and something mm -hmm. good might happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I agree.